Okay, another day, another dollar. Another G-Man Speaks TV video. Give it a like before we even get started. So, it's uploaded about 20 hours ago, and if you're new here, if Get you haven't guys. watched any Welcome. of my... I don't know why it auto plays when I make it full screen. If you're new here, as I was saying. G-Man Speaks TV is an Australian YouTuber. I like following along with his videos. I find that we have a pretty identical perspective with some healthy disagreements in between. So, this is like a follow along reacts type video where I give my thoughts and opinions on what G-Man is presenting on screen and G-Man will share his perspectives, his opinions, him being from a different generation to myself. I still take on board what he has to say, but sometimes we do have a healthy disagreement or a different varied perspective on certain situations, but I've got nothing but respect for G-Man and what he's doing, the content he's putting out. So like I said, if you're new here, check out G-Man Speaks TV. If you enjoy this video, you'll definitely enjoy his. So without further ado, we'll let G-Man run the introductions and we'll follow along with this one and check it out for the first time. G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to talk through a video called The Crazy Red Flag Mania in Modern Dating. This is by a channel called FBE Capital. So go and check him out and I've linked this original clip in the video description. So go give him a like, comment, give them a bit of a push as well. Currently, social media is suffering from red flag mania due to dating apps and f-boys running circles around women, yeah. which has resulted in so many broken and jaded souls that they are now turning every little thing into a major red flag. <laughs> major red flags in guys. 14 red flags. 10. 10 of the most common red flags. <laughs> I can't contain the, the desire, the urge to smirk. Create... I can go on a tangent, as you well know, if you're not here as your first time. So just let it roll. To look out for when dating, part seven. What are three red flags in a guy? If they're under five, six. <laughs> I can't. That one. It's just the. It's not even a red flag, okay? It's, it's just a preference. Why does it need to have this label of a red flag? But we'll just hear a few out for me to rebut. If he actually uses Facebook, say if he doesn't like an outfit that you're wearing, the picture that you posted. I have a lot of these. When they're really, really close to their mother. <laughs> you go on a first date with them and it's like the best first date. Well, I'll give you one. If they're really, really far apart or distant or don't communicate period with their father. Oh. Don't date Korean men who are good at English. Oh, when he texts that. me back, I'm like oh. really happy. <laughs> Red flag at, and their eyebrows are at not this meeting, stage is just a parody kind of expression. They're only child too. Man grooming. They're calling. They're texting. Flowers out of nowhere. Only childs. That's not even their fault. Oh well, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like they're just like so self-centered. <laughs> so when I started, wow, wow, wow. Well, very well. true though. So I've put um, I've put a bunch of videos up with women talking about red flags and icks and all that stuff. Um, so icks. I hate that word, but X saying they're things that, that gross them out or are sort of red flags in a relationship that'll turn a woman of a man. But what I've always found out was women who always talk about red flags or even when you're even out dating and, and on a date and I'll say, what are your red flags when dating? And I've always found that to be a very negative question to ask somebody when you're trying to have a positive date. And then they go and say, oh, well, it's blah, 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 blah. And straight away you're thinking, yeah, you've been absolutely smashed and dashed on that many times that you act to the point that you're on a date, a first date with a guy or a first catch up with a guy that you don't know could be a prospective future boyfriend. You never know where things are going to go. You're straight up negative dobbing on yourself as to what puts you off with men. Because as we all know, guys, women's turn offs with men or things I don't go for or red flags or whatever you want to call it. They're based on bad experiences they've had in the past. So as the guy said, yes, you got the Bryce's, you've got the Stevos, you've got Chang, Hawaiian Dino over in the UK. Dino. These guys are out there just living the dream, promising girls the world, never delivering. And then the next guy comes along who's normal, who's not like that, who actually might want to take it out and get to know them better. He has to put up with all this rubbish. So yeah, guys do ruin it too. Like I've 
I'm very balanced on this channel, guys, as you'll know. Like, you know, it is a men's channel, but I do like to shoot from the hip and just say it how it is. Yeah, guys, I, I stopped doing all of that. Like, I was prolific. I was bad at one point, really bad. I was absolute scumbag, lying, saying everything I had to say, juggling women, promising them stuff I knew I was never going to deliver on. So whatever, I'd find the pre I'd find the trigger point. I would use it to get some action. You know. Well, just on that note, women do fall in love through their ears. And even then, I've also said this in a previous video, it's part-time. It's part-time love. But on the whole topic of, of red flags, just for me to butt in for a second, I don't think it's, it's the worst even conversation starter, let alone a, a topic on the first date. It depends on your definition then as a man of, of red flags. So we'll, we'll use the expression red flags, but for me, it's like a non-negotiable. Okay, so red flags, aka male translation, non-negotiable. So like, what are your non-negotiables when you're going on a date with a woman? For example, your non-negotiable is she has to be of the same faith as you, or at least uh, similar demographic uh denomination correction denomination so you're catholic she's orthodox that's a non-negotiable uh it's a non-negotiable for you that she has a good relationship with her family okay so you can easily interchange that with the female term red flag okay but i'm just going to call it a non-negotiable and i don't think it's out of this world or unacceptable to have that kind of a conversation right off the get-go even have that conversation as a starter on something like bumble or well i was about to say tinder but tinder is <laughs> tinder does not lead to a relationship I, I think that's impossible that is just genuinely i think a hookup app at this stage and it's like a fucking damn casino over there with all those tears that they got so if you've got non-negotiables as a man and you bring them up in the first date, even in the first conversation on a dating app, I don't think that's too far-fetched or too far forward trying to have a positive experience. Well, you're doing it so you don't have a negative one down the road. And it was fun in the short term, but then I realized what I was doing. I was part of the problem and I stopped. So that was like probably three or four years ago now, guys. I, I had enough of it. I was becoming basically like a subhuman, like a monster. I didn't like what I was being because you're doing really bad behaviors and you know you're impacting people. So that's why I stopped. So guys who want to know why I don't really go monster hunting anymore, that's the reason. You know, I got somewhat of a conscience, somewhat. But that's very, very true. Men also have a huge part to play in the current situation. And yes, you can say it's not fair. It's only the top 5% or whatever numbers thrown around of guys, guys who are rooting, booting, the ones who can get girls to, to give it up, you know, in short term without the guy giving any sort of commitment back. Yeah, life's not fair, but it is, yeah, it's not fair to you that as a point that I don't hear anyone else touch on. Yeah, the guys that are rooting and booting you could say they're to blame for uh, the, the state of affairs with women, with women sleeping around, with women having five or more bodies, with how increasingly rare it is to meet an attractive woman who's potentially only been in one, two, three serious long-term relationships and for, for whatever the reason, they didn't work out. And I would beg to slightly differ and say that there's a degree of responsibility with with parenting and and male role models in that female's life so that's why i emphasize of how important it is for a girl especially as she's growing up as she's going through those teenage years 16 17 you could even start as early as 14 okay as she's going through those years into her early 20s of how a father should be present in in their daughter's life while i can acknowledge that it could be difficult especially during those years when they're 
you know, quotation marks, finding themselves, discovering themselves. There's, they're going through changes, okay, just biologically in itself. But for a father to be a role model, so to show the, the, the daughter of, of, of the right way of going about her development, her relationships, her relationships with, with men, how sacred and important to her it should be to withhold her value, so to not spread her legs. And it might sound crude and vulgar for me to say that, but those, those sort of conversations at, at a young age, especially for a girl, to, to educate her, to guide her on the right path, to teach her and show her that she has intrinsic value and that value will become really important as time goes on. So it does sort of boil down to, and, and, and this is a conversation that the mother needs to have with the daughter, but also the father. Okay, I would even argue that the father is a more important figure in a woman's a woman's life, in a girl's life, in, in her journey to becoming a woman. So, with all that said, my final casing point is, if she doesn't have a good relationship with her father, if she doesn't respect her father, heed his advice that he hopefully gave while raising her as she was growing up, if she doesn't respect the man that bore fruit to her existence, planted the seed. If she doesn't respect arguably the closest man to her in her life that she could possibly ever have, besides perhaps her husband. If she can't respect that man, and she can't respect or love any other man. The normal guy may be trying to meet someone, you have to put up with all this rubbish based on what the writers and Steve of the world have done. But it's very true. So I, I agree with that. Isn't just women being increasingly entitled and painful? Yes, that's a huge part of it. But it's also men doing damage and then getting the women's guard ups as well. Guilty as charged. I've done it. Done it. Not proud of it. Looking into this red flag. Yeah. Sorry. Men are to blame. Men are to blame. The fathers are to blame to a degree, okay? Everyone plays a part in it. It's not just the women being promiscuous. It's why, how did they get there in the first place? Yes, you can also blame social media, uh, the rise in trend of, of, of that quick dopamine hit of getting uh, gratification from, from your TikToks, from your Instagram posts, okay? The dopamine is flooding in that, oh man, look at how many likes I've gathered with this uh, half-naked photo. But it does come back as well to, to that core essence of family, family values and, and parenting as well. Okay, to tackle that head on right from the get-go. So you essentially don't let TikTok, Facebook, Instagram be the one raising your daughter. Because if that's what happens, then it, it becomes increasingly difficult to put any sort of blame on the daughter, on the girl, and the way she turns out, because she's been socially reworked and engineered. Mania. I was surprised to see how many women are complaining about men having a too close relationship with their mothers, as if that is a bad thing. Number one, possibly one of the most biggest red flags of all time, is if he has mummy issues. Now I get that- yeah. I'll beat you to it, G-Man. Isn't mommy issues when you have a bad relationship with your mum? Like they say, she's got daddy issues. You don't say she's got daddy issues if she's got a great relationship with her dad. I think she's got it backwards. I've had women say that to me before. So I'm, I'm, I'm close to my, very close to my family, my mum and my dad and my siblings. Very, very close. And I had a, yeah, I had a, a serious girlfriend at one point, so it was very strange that I would say to mum on the phone, or I would hang up and say, all right, mum, love you. That was weird. That was weird. She said, that is weird. I never really understood that. And I think it is that it's a jealousy thing, all right? They don't like the fact that you're close with your mother and B, if your mother is half what switched on to female nature, which most of them are, they intuitive can tell if they don't like a woman or not. You'll be able to tell if your mum or sister likes another woman just by the way they're looking at them. Because women can't hide that shit. They can't fake it. They get worried that they're going to get exposed and that's why they don't want you to be close to your mother because your mother will say something to you and because 
most men or boy or men growing up and have been raised by a mother, they will take their advice about a woman potentially. They don't want that. So they will try and turn it around and shame it. That's why they say it's a red flag. You as a man can then take that on board. If, if you've got a partner, a girlfriend, and she finds it weird that you speak to your mother or if you say something along the lines of, I love you, mum, to end a phone call, and, and and you get some sort of feedback from your partner that, that, that it's weird, that they found it weird or they just found it strange. Maybe you should take that as a man on board as, that's a bit of a red flag, why is that, why is that weird? So I pretty much speak to my father every single day. And the one thing I haven't had is actually any of my partners in the past be like, well, that's so weird. You speak to your dad every single day. Yeah, not one of them. So sometimes it pays to not ignore these kinds of warning signs, especially early on, because they are warning signs. You can think that maybe I'm overanalyzing, but she's the one that's looking uh, deeply into it. If she's seeing it as problematic that you've got a good relationship with your mother, and she's seeing that as you being some kind of a mummy's boy and having mummy issues. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying, just to clarify, break up, but take that on board as to what's her problem. Is it like G-Man said, is it some kind of a jealousy thing? Does she want to start competing for your attention against your mother as well? Because her role as a woman is essentially going to become more important. If you guys get married, you guys have kids, you're starting a family. Yeah, your partner, your wife does become the most important person in your life. Supersedes your mother even. For a man anyway. Anyway, carry on. That some mother-son relationships can go a little <laughs> too far, but in most cases, mothers and sons that are close is actually a good thing yeah, and can it. even save you millions of dollars. Hakimi's divorce from his wife, Hiba Abouk, took an unexpected turn when she filed for more than half of the Moroccan footballer's property and fortune. During the court proceedings, it was revealed that Hakimi had no property or assets under his name. The reason? He yeah, so I used to really not believe in prenups. I thought this is defeating the point. Like we're getting married. We're getting married, which means that we have eternal love and trust for one another. Okay, we have an unbreakable bond. So why would I want want the first action to be of this wedding to set a prenuptial agreement? Like we're already anticipating that something bad's going to happen. So I used to be pretty far against it, but. As time's gone on, and I see stories like this, this is the first time I've, I've heard of this such a, such a thing for, for this person specifically. Hakimi, was it his name? The footballer? It's happened to, to actors, just to, to millionaire men, and even your everyday average every man's he can, he can be taken for just about everything he owns, or at least half. Now... Why I've become, as time's gone on, more on board with a prenuptial agreement is because you can still do your best as a man. But as statistics show us, 80%, if not more, of divorces are initiated by women. So you can go in wholeheartedly, thick and thin, ride or die, and try and make it work despite whatever. I don't even blame the men that try and potentially make it work when infidelity is involved. Because they're really wholeheartedly living by their vows that they, you know, potentially whatever they may be uttered to their, to their wife. But your best sometimes not be enough. And I think it's inherently programmed in women to be resource vampires parasites you could call it i'm not saying that to be derogatory but they will hunt for the next best thing for the greener patch of grass on the other side to gather and store and acquire those resources and if there's an opening to take half of your shit 
let alone if that half means that you will never have to do anything to to earn another dollar and you will live the most luxurious lifestyle i'm sure half of this guy's money is is probably enough for a hundred lifetimes so if if they, if they smell that opportunity even though she has nothing to do with his football if you could even argue like his mother his mother is entitled is entitled to his fortune she probably got him into football right she probably drove him to training picked him up uh, gave him conditions and circumstances to be able to rest, recover, and focus on his goals. That's how he became a successful footballer. His mother was arguably the primary driving factor to his success from an early age. He should be entitled to that. What, what, what did his wife do? What did his partner do to enable him to be his best self on the pitch and off? He had transferred his entire fortune to his mother long before the good, divorce. Good, good. As men, we don't care if a girl has a great relationship with her father or is very close. You just say, I don't care. You should care. You really should care. It comes back to that point I made of if she doesn't respect her father, which again, yes, I can play devil's advocate. And sometimes out of circumstances, the father could have just done a door dash and just exited her life. The father could be... A bad person, however that may look like, but he can just be genuinely a bad person. Okay, he 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 could have he he could just be out of the picture completely. So I understand that sometimes it's out of out of the uh, the woman's circumstances, the girl's circumstances. But if the father is say present, trying to inject himself into the girl's life, the girl in question. And if she's the one that doesn't want a bar of him, especially if it's from third-hand information, like, say, the mother, so the girl's parents are shitting on the father, are roasting him, saying he's this, he's that, he was like this, so-and-so in the past. And if, if you take all that on board and don't actually give that father a chance to explain himself, to give his side of it, well, you're not allowing... For any sort of relationship there to flourish especially if the father's making an attempt and it is important okay despite of things that your parents may have done i think ultimately you have to try to forgive them especially if they're trying to be a part of your life okay like no matter what and you know my father instilled in me that even if you disagree even if you are totally against something that your parents may have done in the past Maybe even doing to this present day, you should always hold a degree of respect for your parents, no matter what, because you wouldn't be here without them. With a mother, that is perfectly fine. Maybe that is a very good thing. That is an absolute positive that someone's close and gets along with their parents, authority figures in their life. Because if they don't, and I've had this, this experience with women who don't respect their father or their mother or never even have any sort of family values like they got to 18 fucked off out of home or whatever it is they're not going to respect you they're not going to respect you as a man and see you as someone as authority in the house they can't respect their dad and they hate their dad or they say things about their dad that's their dad that's the person that brought them into this world yes there are occasions where that is warranted there are deadbeat dads out there scumbags stego dads but not all dads and you do hear a lot of women ragging their dad out. So they're ragging their dad out. What chance have you got? Even a must. Since if she's daddy's girl, then usually that means that her father spoiled her and is very protective of her. It is actually when the dad is... Doesn't necessarily mean he spoiled her. So providing lavish lifestyles, buying her a pony. Those sort of actions don't have to be involved for a girl to love her father and have a close relationship with him. It's not not an essential facet, okay? She can be daddy's girl because she... For her to be daddy's girl, I should say, in the first place, means that she has to respect her father. And her respecting her father shouldn't be through materialistic possessions. Because that, that isn't respect for her father. That's just... That's already putting her on the wrong path from an early age that okay so i'll be daddy's girl to get what i want 
as opposed to I'll be daddy's girl because I heed my father's warnings. I heed his advice. He lives by example through his relationship with my mother. Not around or doesn't show any interest in her when all hell breaks loose and you get some serious daddy yeah. issues, aka stripper poles and triple digit body counts, which usually six or more body counts is bad enough. We don't even need to go into double, let alone triple. That's <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it. Okay, fine, I'll say it. If she's like, we'll use Paris Hilton as an example. Yeah, sure. And then when you divorce, if you can take half, good for you, son. But seriously, if you want a fruitful relationship, body counts, hate to say it, they do matter. Now, the pussy doesn't have an odometer, but <laughs> it's proven time and time again, hell science-based scientifically based it's not just me saying this if a woman has lived a promiscuous lifestyle her chances of divorce her chances of holding down a relationship with you are ever so slightly decreasing with every single joyride so to speak usually leads to a very jaded 30 or 40 something claiming that all men are toxic for dating yeah. younger women as a woman in her 30s who's been in New York for 10 years, it's really hard to watch toxic men continuously date <laughs> younger and younger. Why do they do that? Well, there's a- Because they're sexier. And look, if, if a guy's just straight up looking for action and he, and he can do it, and that's his preference, he's gonna take it. That's just the reality. An average looking 19 year old is- oh, Action, better looking. I would say she's been ran through significantly less or if at all she hasn't been exposed to social media just because based on her age and the toxic environment don't take this out of context if you're like the odd freak here all right i'm not talking about underage or grooming women but if she's young of legal age it's just factually based that she's had less exposure to a toxic environment. She's got less baggage, okay? She's had less bad experiences. And when someone is like that, they're easier potentially to deal with. And if you live, let's just say a role model like lifestyle, you can show this woman early on, you know, the keys to a fruitful, long lasting, happy, relationship it's, it's not necessarily that she's young and, and, and sexy all right it's, there's more to it than that it's like a clean slate that you can work with okay better than a 39 year old it's just it's just there's no such thing hot food biology if it comes down that too biology It's easier for a woman to conceive when she's 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, as opposed to 39, 40, 41, 42. <laughs> Again, yes, biological. If your plan is to have kids and have a family of your own as a man, no matter how good looking or wealthy and rich she is, sometimes money ain't enough to reverse the biological clock and it could be too late for you to bear children. Down to actually dating them. Um... I don't know, I'm mixed on that because I think, yes, some women who are in their late 20s, uh, 30s and whatever, similar age range to myself, they can be really good, um, you know, a bit more experienced in life, yada, yada, but also on the inverse of that, they can also be... A woman doesn't need experience in life. Just trust me, all right? What does that even mean? You want her to have experience in life. I actually would rather she didn't have any experience. What does she need it for? Most of the time, experience is what overcoming a shit situation. Why do you want your woman to have baggage? Is what I'm getting at again. Why does she need to have experience?
if she comes across a situation and she's with you, then it's up to you as a man to inform her, to educate her. Like I said, that's what the father figure in the house is for as well. To, to work through, say, a problem that she might encounter. What, what else is experience, though? What, sexual experience? Is that what we're getting at? I'm not having a go at G-Man here, by the way. I'm just saying, what's, what's the, uh, the terminology for, for, for experience? And a woman having experience is a good thing. I'm not quite putting my finger on what kind of experience for a woman is a good thing. Well, overcoming loss, grief, challenges. Like I said, generally, her having overcome bad situations in the past sort of translates to baggage. Okay, we all have baggage as people, but most of the time, when you bring that said baggage into a relationship, Sooner or later, it could potentially be uh, the culprit for a downfall too. Very, very abrasive, opinionated, um, prickly. The list goes on, like just not dateable. But then a lot of the younger women, they haven't been through or made the same bad decisions as some of these older women have. And so they're a lot more fun, pleasant. Okay. They're not so set in their ways. That's a good point, G-Man. They're not so set in their ways. So yeah, if they're younger, like I said, they haven't been exposed to that toxicity, toxic environment overall, just based on their age. And like I said, again, good male role models have made them not stray from the path. And they can just be a lot more open, a lot more... Uh, I'm not finding the word. A lot more receptive, okay, as opposed to set in their ways and difficult to manage and educate. Like your opinion all of a sudden becomes you know, invalid in her eyes to her ears because she's so set on a particular uh, opinion or value ideal that she may have. They're free to be around. Why, why else would a girl go on, on TikTok complain about that? Because now her... Because she wants validation for her complaint. Her time's over. For the guys that maybe she was getting with 10 years ago, well, she's been replaced now, like Leo, like a Leonardo DiCaprio type situation. I, I find it hilarious because that's why I do a lot of TikToks, guys. I find like TikToks are like a window into the female psyche. They bear all on camera. <laughs> what else to say? You don't think twice about it. Who's watching it? few reasons number one men are gross now whenever i see these types of women who have lost all hope i just love to dive into their dating history to see what exactly happened and more precisely what type of self-destructive delusional behavior they yeah. engaged in Spot to on. get to this point i know i have sent a lot of people with my three dates one night video so today we're going on five dates and not just in brooklyn we're venturing <laughs> out so she has turned dating into a game slash yeah. content creation tool just so she can piss off people online Hmm, I wonder where things went wrong. Now before we dive into this mess of a dating history, I'd like to quickly turn to a frequently mentioned red flag by women, which is the whole not paying on the first date issue. Oh, yeah. So the number seven red flag is that he doesn't pay on the first date. Now if this was me, I wouldn't go out with him again. Let me guess, as G-Man once put it in a video, how did you say it, G-Man? Rules for me and rules for thee. So once, once tr traditional values from the man when it favors them, the man pays for the date, the man pays for dinner. But just how traditional is she <laughs> you know, during that date? What kind of clothes is she wearing? Is she half naked, acting out promiscuously? What's her socials like? Are there half naked photos, ass shots, got that hip turned out and trying to look all hypersexualized yet innocent? How many bodies has she got? Did she just get out of a short term thing or a serious relationship? What's her relationship like with her family? I mean, you want traditionalism? Are you bringing it? If there's context, I'll go into a little story for you guys. You should like it. If you're still here, you'll you'll like the story. Okay, it's like again lived lived uh, experience, true to life, real life example from me. But it, 
If there's context, I'll provide it. Now I agree that if you are a traditional woman, then it's fair to expect a guy to pay on the first date. However, and this is where so many women mess up, you actually have to be traditional yourself. I just bait them to the punch. I bait J-Man to the punch. I bait this old boy to the punch. If you want a guy to do those traditional things. I went in hard on this topic in my other video, why wow. men don't approach women anymore. So check that one out later. It's a good one. But the main problem here is that you have an entire society that wants to turn masculine men. My goodness. That's soy Jack and soy Bane into feminine soy boys and then complain that men aren't in their masculine energy anymore this shows that he's not in his mask yeah he's not in his mask because it's a shaming tactic well you're not masculine if you don't pay for me I, I do agree i think even even 20 years ago even 10 years ago and i was going on dates um when i was out there doing all of that i actually never thought twice about paying on the first date but i definitely did a few years ago and i was back on the scene after i got uh, separated and divorced because you come to realize that women are multi-dating. They're not just dating you. If you know a woman is just dating you or one man at a time, I see no problem with, with paying, right? But if they're going out with guys every week or they've got many different things happening, but guys are talking to them attention, you're not getting any value for spending that money. You're just paying a fee for maybe having a chance at some attention from a female. Like it's a form of, um, you know, the oldest um, occupation in the world. That's what the way I see it these days. I never, I used to be, I used to be used to turn up at the door with the flowers and the heart-shaped chocolate box. You know, it would be nice if the world was actually wholesome like that, but it's not. Yeah, been there before I knew anything about anything. Just got out of the army and went on my first date as like a 22 and a half year old coming on the edge of yeah teetering on the edge of 23 went out on my first date yeah i was like that i actually went out and got a rose like a proper rose with a bow on it chocolates yeah needless to say <clears throat> i get i thought the date was pretty good yes i was shy nervous not familiar, out of my depth, didn't know what I was doing. But hell, I put my damn best foot forward. To this day, I got no regrets. And she messaged me. I'm, I'm bypassing a lot of the context, but she messaged me the next day. Thank you, but I don't think we're looking for the same thing. Instead of a rose in a box... She probably would have been more content with a box of condoms. Harsh, but true. That's ultimately what she wanted in the end. I found out a few years later when we reconnected. Uh, I can't remember now the context of, of how we reconnected, but we just reconnected over social media. I think it's when I, when I first got Snapchat and I still had the, the same phone. So how Snapchat can link you with people's phone numbers that you have so yeah that's that's how we reconnected and i remember i re-engaged uh, like in that conversation oh what happened you know like three and a half years ago and yeah that's that that's when i got the truth like that's what that meant we're not looking for the same thing yeah so if you're not looking for the same thing no box of chocolates no diamond, pearl necklaces and rings, no fancy dinner dates are going to change that. So before you start spending a heap of money, putting your best foot forward, your best foot just might not be the right foot. <laughs> okay, it might just not be the right foot. So sometimes you actually have to take a step back before you take one forward into God knows what. If you, if you don't know, if you don't assess what she's after, what she's all about, if she is a serial dater, she's talking to five guys at the same time while she's talking to you, she went on a date with you, she'll be going on a date with Chad and Brad the next day, Travis the day after, and potentially 
Tyrone is a side guy that comes over to fill her need, what she's looking for. All right, so till you've even established that, don't go all trad. <laughs> Holy shit, like I said, is she? So fortunately enough, every single woman that I did meet on a dating app, we engaged in a relationship quite literally after the first meeting. From my ex to my ex before that, it was uh, it was never just like uh, hook up. Like within a month, it was it was a relationship. Okay, I would even say a loving relationship. I, I fell in love with those women, and not because I had sex with them. Oh my god, it was so good. I'm in love. No, like genuinely, I've had women in my life who really cared for me they they showed acts of love and now i know i've gone into a bit of story time here but hear me out you like it all right these are there's red, there's red flags but there's also a hell of a lot of green flags to look out for so given this story some uh some context my ex-girlfriend sent me i was on centrelink at the time she knew that she sent me like 500 dollars cash before even meeting me. I wasn't scamming her. Ultimately, we ended up being together for a multitude of years. But she sent me $500 before she even physically met me. She relocated for me. Now, I'm not talking relocated from one side of Melbourne to the other. One side of the state to the other kind of relocate. So, I know she tried, and she knew my circumstances. She knew. I was on Centrelink, living in a share house. Yeah, okay, maybe I had things in the pipeline, but at the moment, the, the reality of my life was that, I suppose the only thing I really had going for me was that I was seven days a week consistent with gym and dieting. And I was about three years younger than I am now, which is probably better, <laughs> less wiser. So yeah, she, she displayed green flags and that's what I'm getting at when I fell in love. I fell in love because her actions, you know, her demeanor, her presentation, her care, love and affection, concern for me, it was all there. All the traits that, that I was after that I thought, make um, make a woman fruitful to have in your life an important person in your life so on the topic of red flags there's also some some green flags that you as a guy can look out for all right sometimes they can be pretty forward those green flags but but you know like i like i said once never criticize a woman for making an effort and also yeah don't be a little bitch Maybe that's not the right word for it, but never knock a woman or, or say, oh, she's too intense. She's too forward if she's trying to do something good for you, good by you. Women are not wholesome. These women that are complaining about men not paying on the first date, it's because they go on so many dates and if they have to pay, then it actually starts costing them quite a bit of money. Women are cheap. I always say this to people, women are the cheapest creatures on earth. Yeah, inherently they all want those resources, sooner or later. So when they do say pay, when they do give you money, it's even kind of like an investment for them. They're investing in the short term, but expecting a significant growth in the long. But I wouldn't go as far as to say the cheapest creatures on earth. Like, I have seen some really cheap guys, all right? The, the, the kind of guys that will rather let their kids freeze to death before they allow for the heater to be run just to save $70 on a gas bill a month. So, cheapest creatures on earth? Contextual. Situation case by case based. Do you ever hear a guy saying, oh... 
the girl didn't pay, didn't want to pay on the first date, so I had to pay scumbag chick. True. Haven't heard that. Because we know, we, we, we know as men, we're going to have to spend some money along the line, but women want everything for free. I, I once went out with a girl and I went out there for a few years. I paid for everything, holidays, all sorts of shit, you know, go to, um, you know, holidays away, nothing, nothing overseas or anything like that, but locally in the country here. And all once, I just wanted to test her out and I asked her to buy me a coffee from um, a good old Muffin Break. It was in one of those shopping centers. She bought it because I went into a shop and she didn't have my, I used to just give her money and shit. I thought I was Mr. Big Dog. I learned pretty soon not to do that. But she bought it. I said, oh, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. She goes, don't, don't get used to it. Like, don't effing get used to it. Stared me straight in the face. I was like, I can't believe this. Like four years, I've probably spent tens of thousands of dollars on this bird. She bought me, back then it would have been $3.50 or something for a coffee. Wow. So women are the, the point I'm trying to make is women are the cheapest creatures on earth. If they're arguing about men. Yeah. I mean, po point made. That's pretty rough. Now, see, I've never had that. All my partners have known better than to to say something. I, I don't think it's just been in their hearts. That right there is something you should take on as a red flag. <laughs> don't fucking expect that. A coffee. Yeah, I, I can give plenty of examples. I've even been out on dates where my partner at the time would just straight up ask me what I want, would go and order it, would pay, and at the most would say something along the lines of, it's all right, I got it. You can transfer me if you want. Now, of course, decency prevails and you transfer them the money. But if I was to not transfer them the money, they're not going to be chasing it. They're not going to be chasing me the next day or let alone like a week or whatever after. It's not going to be like, oh, nail in the coffin. I never want to speak to you again because you never paid me $20, $30, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Hey, take note of these things. It, it can just be a slither of time in a moment. Like G-Man just said, he just asked for a coffee. Don't, yeah, you know, there's overanalyzing, but don't just dismiss it either. If she's having the audacity to, to, to tell you that, you know, don't get fucking used to it when you've asked for a coffee, making it out like, <laughs> Look what I've done for you, motherfucker. Like, take mental note of that, all right? Big problems start small. Not buying them shit. Doesn't that make them cheap? Just by virtue of saying that? Especially when they're working full time, okay? If, if they don't work or it was back in 1950 and they didn't have the earning capacity that men have. Sure, makes sense to me. If a guy's making five times what they make. But when making a lot more than men now, or the same or more, especially in professional environments, well, they complain about not paying. They don't have the same buying power. So it's just cheap, being cheapskate. That's my take on it. I'll, you, you never be able to convince me anything different. I've always thought this ever since I sort of had a realization probably when I was like 20 or 21 years old. And then I never did stuff like that ever again. Yeah, I did dates here and there, but not full blown leading with the wallet stuff. So guys, when I tell you things, I, I've done all this shit before. Well, made all the mistakes. Masculine energy, and he doesn't have that protector provider mentality. It's a very clear indicator of that, and that he's not willing to make even a small investment. No, of course he's not willing to invest because there's nothing to invest in. Yeah. You've got women out here scheduling multiple dates a night mm -hmm. and going on as many as 10 or even 15 dates a month. The only New York City dating hack you need to know is three dates, one night, 5 30, 6 45. 8 o'clock. You do not owe these guys more than 45 minutes of your time, but it's a volume game. And then some just say f*** it and go on a new date every single day. I'm going on 28 dates in the month of February. I'm 31. I'm very single. I live in New York City. That's disgusting. And it's, it's also, I say disgusting, not because necessarily it leads to intercourse, but it's 
it's disgusting because you can't possibly put your best foot forward and invest quality time into trying to establish a fruitful relationship if the next day it's the next guy the next and the next and the next and the next you're not even giving anything time to blossom so then it just becomes what thrill seeking uh some sort of social media challenge to prove some kind of degenerate point what are you trying to accomplish or show people that you're unstable because again i reiterate there is no way in hell that you can be laying the groundwork to try and move forward when it's just the next guy on the next day when you just go on a date you will fail to even assess to see any good quality traits in the person that you're going on a date with if the first thing you do when you get home or even before you get home when you get in the uber or whatnot to head back home you're already opening your bumble or your hinge and you're trying to line up the next thing with the next guy <laughs> what does a very single even mean like you know, how are you single or not very single i never understood that uh, very single what does that mean like you're just ready just for action like what does that what does that mean someone please explain that to me in the comments very single so she's like really putting an emphasis on single by saying that so my interpretation of that is she hasn't been in a long-term relationship for a significant amount of time and she's been with a significant a plethora of guys short term so i'm very single because she's not with them she's still single when she has something casual because it never correlates or transcends to dating to a relationship because it was so short term so she's very single she hasn't had anything serious with someone for a significant amount of time is 28 dates but there can be certain days where i go on multiple dates and it doesn't necessarily have to be 28 different men although maybe it's gonna be yeah i'm not investing in that if i'm going to invest i'm doing so in myself and a great way to do that is with today's sponsor teach henley Got with teach henley you get access to a great skincare line that is uncomplicated to use and uh, if you click great fake on. red flag that especially mod all right before we start the back end of the of the show guys I'll uh, skip through his um, paid advertisement that he got. Good on him. He's got, a big, he's got a big channel. He's getting paid segments. So that's one thing I won't do, guys. You can mark my words now. I won't do paid advertisements in my videos. So on that note, if you're enjoying the channel, um, you're enjoying this video and my take on things, please subscribe. Uh, and the best way to help me out so I don't have to do sponsorships is just to watch my videos through to the end. That's it, that's all you gotta do. It's free for you. And that's the way that YouTube gives me a little bit of pocket money. Hats off to you, G-Man. You're the first YouTuber, genuinely the first, who I've seen outright say that, that they won't take a dime to sell themselves out, to sell themselves short. Me, on the other hand, I don't even have ambitions of being offered sponsorships, let alone, yeah, being in a position to take them or not. But on that topic, I wouldn't either. I would if I believed in the product. So, <laughs> Manscaped. <sighs> Nothing's actually coming to mind. <laughs> what are the, the biggest ones that I see? I said Manscaped because I wouldn't take that product on board as a sponsor so I, I do my dude oh that's the fucking one fume the good habit where you breathe in essential oils and you pay money for flavored air <clears throat> so straight up outright bullshit like that i would not do even if i was put in a pretty good position unless you know, i'm a rather smart guy i'd look through like the claws what's required of me if i don't have to promote it i encourage people to to use it if i just have to have it in the background of a video or something 
play the system kind of thing. All right, yeah, maybe. But if I have to talk about it and preach to you how good it is to breathe in essential oils and flavored air, I'm not fucking doing it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to tell you to do something unhealthy. But on the other hand, if Red Bull offered me a sponsorship <laughs> or Monster Energy drinks, well, I consume that shit. So it wouldn't be me telling you guys to, to get on the Red Bulls, but it would work for me because that's my unhealthy habit that I enjoy, that I like. That I consume. I'm going off topic. Let's keep it in the modern day red flag dating realm. Hey, if you do want to support the channel, um, check out the Patreon link in the description. All right, let's get on with it. Modern women like to drop is the whole he wants exclusivity too fast. They are asking for exclusivity off the bat. Relationships take time to grow. If someone is trying to lock you down too soon, it's a sign that they have a wound at play. <laughs> no, it's not. If a man is trying to lock you down, he's actually interested in you. Right? He cares about you and he's probably liking or seeing potential in something that you have to offer him. What even is too soon? Like I just said, I was in a serious relationship with my ex-girlfriend. Like I said, she moved across the state before we actually even physically met. Moved. All right? Not like temporarily, like moved. Rented. Uh, it's a two-way street. Oh, you know, if a woman's trying to lock you down as well, don't interpret that as a bad thing. Why, why, why is too soon looked down upon, or it's some kind of a, a, a yeah, a, a bad thing? So you can continue to fuck around behind one another's backs, to continue to lie, deceive, and potentially lead each other on, so someone can end up with a broken heart and damaged goods themselves. If you like it, she likes it. If you see value in one another and respect one another from the get-go, more power to you. 60 to 90 days before you decide to commit. 60 to 90 days? Are you crazy? Please drop a like on the video if you think that modern women want to be treated like girlfriends but still act as if they're single. And comment down below what you think. I think I've never been in that situation, but I understand it's possible. That's why I come back to saying red flags and green flags and a conversation about them on a first date even on a first conversation over a dating app is not too far gone it's not far-fetched it's actually quite viable and in your best interest so we're going to expect the guys <laughs> to get them out every week call them and text them listen to their problems and struggles invest time and money in them be there for them emotionally for three straight months all while they still get to bang other dudes yeah nah f that that is absolute yeah and spend a bunch of money and have a bunch of stress because a lot of guys who might not have the option they might get with a girl who they think is a little bit higher than put them on the pedestal they know she's out running around and doing whatever but you accept it because you feel like you can't do any better and if she gets away you're not going to do better than her or another girl might not come around so a lot of guys put up with this bullshit because she's being honest about it up front and yeah, if they're honest about it and you take it on, that's on you. They go spend her money stressing and having your stomach twisting when she's not answering her phone. You know what she's doing. If a woman's not answering their phone or answering texts text pretty quick, what do you think they're doing? She's on her back, legs in the air. Yeah, she's not interested. Again, experience talking here. When she is. She'll make an effort to meet you. She'll make an effort to reply. And it's generally rather sharpish, okay? Conversation just flows. You care about her voicemails, videos, photos, and even if she doesn't care about yours, she'll at least pretend that she does. <laughs> if she's not getting back to you for like 24 hours... And, and that bothers you, I should say, and that bothers you, then you're already over, over investing as a man. We want to never too far away from their phones. Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah, sorry. They text you back the next day. I oh, had this happen to me. They text you back the next day. 
Oh, yeah, my phone went flat and I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. What has a chick's phone ever been flat? Oh, come on. Absolutely insane. And it's the biggest reason for why modern women are not only single, but are also constantly getting used for hookups and get damaged by F-boys. Because no traditional guy is going to put up with that. And if your biggest concern in dating is the ability to keep sleeping with other men, then you are not a serious option or wifey material. There's absolutely nothing wrong with expecting exclusivity in the early stages of dating if you are dating to find a long-term partner. But this just shows you the utter hypocrisy in these so-called red flag videos because what they're really doing is showing that modern women want to have their cake and eat it too. Which brings it- Let's be fair here, because God, I want to be balanced. He's saying they're all doing it. Now he's showing a whole bunch of Instagram, TikTok sluzzers. Not all girls do this stuff, but it is common. It does, it does happen a lot, especially women who are on TikTok and watch this bull crap. I've had it said to me, to my face, that women blatantly juggling guys and girls from uh, off, off Bumble and Tinder and all that have told me that they actually are doing this. So it, it, it's very common, but not, they're all not all doing it. But yes, it's a lot of them. So you should be absolutely aware of it. And that's why I think many guys are aware, especially that channels like mine and many others that have been around for a lot longer than me, have called this stuff out. So guys know they have the information at hand to make decisions. You're not getting into situations that are gonna cause you a lot of pain and hurt and make you even more bitter and, and jaded and, and, and make you even a super red pill extremist. As I said, guys have asked me, am I red pill? Guys, I would say, I've always uh, thought in a way that's probably aligned to the red pill. I wouldn't say I'm an extremist red pill person. No, I've always thought that way. And whenever I've gone off script with it, like when I got married, I knew, I knew I shouldn't have done that, but I went and did it and I paid for that pretty dearly. But am I red pill? No, I would say red pill aware guys. Like I like to see balance, so red pill aware, but open to other ideas and anecdotal evidence. And that's why in my videos, I talk from my experience. I'm not saying this is the way it is because I've noticed it's red pill, black pill, uh, blue pill, whatever pill it is. It's this ideology and that's it. How many pills fucking are there? The rainbow pill, the soy pill, <laughs> blue, red, gold, pink, brown, orange. I don't know what pill I am. I'm just me. I'm a reasonable minded, logic based individual speaking through experience and wanting the best for everyone who watches my videos. I'm just trying to put people, not per se on the right path, but provide information that can allow them to do that for themselves. I don't know what pill that falls under, but I don't lead by anyone's ideology. Rather, my own my own understanding of traditional values through the way i've been raised and through my experiences and nothing can stray out of the boundaries and if you say something that's out of the boundaries of the doctrine that's generally prescribed then you're disregarded or you're a simp or you're whatever it is right so guys i'm red pill aware but i live life according to my own rules and based on my own experiences i don't create or follow red pill rules or black pill stuff or anything like that. But I'm very cynical and I'm very ruthless um, when it comes to women. So that's maybe why a lot of you guys have said, are you red pill? Maybe I am naturally, but I wouldn't say that. You live life on your own terms. You live through your own experiences and have your own opinions and perspectives. Whatever the fuck pill that is. Good on you, G-Man. That's why I react to your videos. Like I said, we, we think alike. We see things in a very similar sort of light. Right? Based. <laughs> hey, I'm that label. I don't know. But I don't <clears throat> like labels, I guess. Just to the very well-known Instagram red flag of men liking sexy photos of other women. You know, him liking pictures of girls in bikinis. If they're liking these photos, okay, that's a whole nother one. Where other people can see that he's liking it. I think that is very disrespectful, and I think that would be. It's a little weird. I don't, I've never done it. I don't even know why you would be as a guy looking at photos of women in bikinis, especially if you're in a relationship, unless you're wanking off to them because you're not having sexual intercourse with your partner. I suppose that's a justification. I'm just using the reasonable mind here to justify behavior. 
But all that said, if you're walking around dressed rather lewd as a woman, and like I said, doing the, uh, I just repeated myself with the like I said comment. Get your vocabulary in check, homie. If you're flaunting yourself, tossing out the ass cheek, you know, tossing out the hip, low cut top, and you're uploading that, and you're licking your lips and liking that dopamine hit, don't lie, you like those guys sliding in your DMs. You know it's not right. Again, not saying all women, but if you are the type of woman that has an Instagram and uploads those kind of photos, don't be that hypocrite. Don't be that hypocrite to say, well, why is the man liking these type of photos? That's what you live on. That's what you crave. You crave that man liking those type of photos if you're the type of girl that's uploading them. A big red flag as well. Now, first of all, posting a sexy photo is obviously way worse than just liking one. Especially <laughs> if you're just scrolling through your feed and a sexy photo pops up. Cute puppy, like, awesome Ferrari 250 GT SWB Xtreme. Don't even be that guy scrolling through photos of puppies to like and cars to like. Be attentive to the pages you follow. I don't use Instagram, but if you are using Instagram, be attentive to the to the pages you follow. Don't let it become brain rot where there's mindless imagery giving you that casino like dopamine buzz of, okay, yeah, that's enticing. Like, just don't even be that guy. Unless it's actually uh, viable content to nourish you. Extremely sexy photo, definitely like. Then who cares? It's the same as saying a particular actress, model, or musician is hot. It means nothing. But going out of your way to take dozens of half-naked photos, finding the perfect pose to then post the best one online for everyone to see, and generating dozens of comments and DMs. Yeah, if you're a model... That's, you're an influencer, a paid one at that, not a wannabe trying to get. Fair enough, I suppose. You know, these things existed before the internet was mainstream. You would go and buy magazines, your men's magazines, FHMs and Zoo Weeklies here in Australia. I remember I bought them as a... As a teenager still in high school, that was the way you, you read articles and you, you got some sexy time posters that you could put up on your wall. Yeah. So if that's your occupation as a woman to get the right photo with the right lighting, with the right pose, you're a bikini model. You're a bikini model. That's your occupation. But if, if you just... Uh, time and time again promiscuously showing yourself off because you're not doing it for financial gain as like I said an occupation but you're doing it for the dopamine for the attention for the validation well then contextually it's a totally different story especially if you have a boyfriend so all of a sudden now his validation isn't enough and it comes back to what I've said about plethora of options for women. Well, they get this dopamine hit. They see Tyrone like it. They see Mike Swick like it. They see that comment. They see the love hearts. They know they've got sexual market value. Before you know it, poison infests the brain, infests the system, the soul. She's already got one foot out the door about your body and wanting to meet up? No, that is actually the red flag. And the hypocrisy here is that somehow not wanting a guy to simply click the like button is perfectly normal, but not wanting your girl to show her ass and tits to the world, that is controlling and toxic yeah, behavior. Yeah, I just say that. He's super jealous from the get-go, um, telling you like, you know, you shouldn't wear that or why'd you post that? Say if he doesn't like an outfit. Exactly right, because they don't want you to cut off their dopamine hit. They still want you to provide everything, give them that, that hit. They want both sides of the fence. It's like when guys, um, they want a nice nurturing girl, they get her and they still go and bang sluts on the side. Well, it's the same, it's the same thing. You want your cake mm -hmm. and they want to eat it too. And it's a lot of these chicks. And they want to do the whole, 
oh, it's not okay to shame you. What, they call it slut shaming. Oh, obviously, that's the funniest word. They say, oh, you're slut shaming. See so what you're calling yourself a, a slut? Oh, I, I... Don't victim blame. Oh, I didn't have any control over it. Oh, you know. But let me get back to the red pill point, guys. So, as I said, I'm aware, as you can tell on my channel, I don't like labels and I don't like telling people what to do. So people go, do you recommend marriage? Do you not recommend marriage? When it comes to that, guys, I'll give you information based on my experiences and, and um, with stuff from social media to sort of talk out, bring out talking points. But that information is for you to take and make your own decisions. Be aware of what happens out there. It's not everybody. Not everybody is like this. And also I think this, what this video really put, call, calls out is it's social media as well. So you get a lot of these channels, red pill channels, black pill channels, whatever you want to call them, PUA channels. And a lot of stuff is filled with extremist sort of hate messaging. I'm not saying there are, you know, oh, gee, man, oh, yeah. there is a lot of all women this, all women that, all women that. As soon as I always say this, as soon as you start using all, it's like we, it's like the, the, the male equivalent of women saying all men are trash. Not all women do these things. Just to interject, that's what I'm really trying to emphasize as well. For those of you who might have the notion to think I'm shitting on all women. I don't have a bad thing to say about any of my ex-girlfriends. They're still my ex-girlfriends. They're not my current girlfriends. For the most part, they were lovely women. And I've also mentioned this in a previous video. It's a two-way street when a relationship falls apart. There are things that I could have done better too. And I'm in part to blame for those relationships not having worked out to their fullest. So no, not all women. But let's just say for a majority or for a large portion, same the other way around for women, for traditional women looking for a traditional guy. They may run into roadblocks and step in shit along the way just as much as men can land a baddie when they're looking for a traditional woman. Uh, men can be in disguise towards women and women can be in disguise towards men. And things can not pan out for the other side. So all comes back to the very start of the video a conversation about red flags a conversation about values non-negotiables i think it's an important thing to put on the table right off the get-go what is a non-negotiable what are you unwilling to compromise on what is something that you desperately want out of a relationship nothing wrong with a serious conversation as a first date and if she's saying that this is too much, this is too forward, this is too soon, let's just uh, worry about having fun with each other. <clears throat> well, if you're not there just looking for fun, if you're there looking for something serious, then perhaps you should ought to tell yourself as a man that we aren't on the same playing field. We just aren't looking for the same thing. So you don't end up being that guy that I was as a 22 year old that gets a message the next day after what I considered a pretty good date that I don't think we're looking for the same thing. A high enough population of them do them. And that's why I make you guys aware of it <clears throat> through my experiences. But also in life, I've come across many, many, many fantastic women. And I think that's what I want to say. This is more highlighting some of the bad shit that goes on out there on both sides of the fence so you can be aware of it but also saying don't swallow these pills whatever color it is <laughs> blue red black and just take that for what it is and be extremist on it and 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 hate be full of hate because that's going to hold you back in life too so they're my thoughts guys if people have asked me that question that's my answer to it um that's just the answer is i'm me I say things the, the way that I say them and, and through my experiences, I don't put a colour on it. That's probably the best way of saying it. Anyway, it's enough of a rant. Let's play this one out. Outfit that you're wearing, the picture that you posted. I definitely think social media can lead to a very toxic relationship. Yeah, makes perfect sense. 
Anyways, moving on to the next so-called red flag that I would even call borderline psychotic behavior, and that is wanting full access to your phone. The number one red flag in a relationship. Ask your partner if you can check their phone. Guilty. I've done it. I have asked. Not the kind of access that I'm going to be monitoring that shit every single damn day. But I do find it to be problematic and you should too. If she's still got dating apps and you've already gone on your second, third, fourth date, let alone something like living with each other. Now, I'm not saying that I had that living with a woman and she was on dating apps. She had them installed. But there's other things. She's still got her ex in her contacts. She's still got her ex on Snapchat, on uh, WhatsApp. She's got photos of her and, and, and her ex on her phone. You gotta ask yourself, why is that the case? I can understand there's, there's memories, there's reminiscence. I go through periods of that too. I suppose, yeah, I can I can reminisce on on a good memory because, like I said, even though the relationship might not work out, that there, there can be good memories. There can be memory. I I hold them very close to my heart personally. With with all my partners, I have good memories. I think about them almost every day. It's not that they make me depressed. They make me cry in my sleep and keep me up at night. But per se, I might just go on a walk by myself in the evening, just an evening stroll, and the thought will cross my mind. A positive memory will enter my head. But getting back on topic of having it on your phone, so if it, like I said, dating apps, if the girl's got you know, photos, especially if they're intimate kind of photos of, of her and her ex, it does beckon the question of, like, why is that there? Like, I had a photo of me and my partner on my wall for the longest time. But I realized it wasn't doing me any sort of service. I still remember that photo, pixel for pixel. But, like, the where, the what, what we were doing, what the weather was like. But, it, but, but it's all in here and it's all in here. I don't, I don't need a... On my wall especially if I'm entering a different relationship so that's what I'm saying just like she doesn't need it just like you shouldn't have it uh, on your phone per se and then don't give that person that next person that you're dating some bullshit of well it doesn't mean anything it's just the past well it doesn't take particularly too much effort for you to delete it as well so it does mean something And if they say no, it's personal, it's a huge red flag. How about just li Yes, it can be personal to an extent. Like, you can have personal things on your phone. I'm sort of emphasizing here uh, just a few things. Like, she's still got her ex added. She's still following her ex on social media. She's still got his number, but even then there can be justifications for that. For example, if you're in that situation where you're dating someone who's in touch with their ex because she's had a kid with them, or uh, there's, there's, there's still some kind of finances being settled, whether it's property or maybe there's even a pet, an animal involved. So there are caveats of where it's where you can show understanding that it, that it can be reasonable of why that say contact is there. But yeah, if the, if the relationship ended in, in, in smoke and flames, but she still got photos of her with that guy on her phone, she still got him on WhatsApp. She's still following him on Instagram. Like I said, it's not a hard thing to delete that, to remove that. That shouldn't be there, okay? That, there shouldn't still be a wedge in that door so you can push it open. To move on with the next thing, sometimes you actually have to shut that door and make sure it's locked. So sometimes in life, you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself wanting to go backwards, but 
you can't you can't entirely go forwards wholeheartedly with the next thing if you haven't shut that door behind you because then you're not giving you know, yourself entirely to the next opportunity you know, you don't want to be caught in the middle in life with anything with relationships with a task at hand you want to go into things not head over heels but wholeheartedly with true intentions so that's my tangent on phones and, and access to a partner's phone i'm not talking that everyday access like you're just going to be monitoring them okay because that can build resentment and just a bad faith a lack of trust but uh it's also reasonable to ask your partner to to delete uh remnants and, and traces of the past especially if it's a rather fresh past okay if she was dating a guy earlier that year sleeping with a guy earlier that year there shouldn't be any traces any material of that guy just like you you were hooking up with a as a guy with a chick the other week and now you've met the one or you've you've met a girl that you really like don't be that fucking guy to to keep that chick that you know gave you a good gobby last week don't keep her on the fucking side while all at the same time pretending that you want something serious with this one oh this one's a good one but i'm just not too sure if it's gonna work out with this good one so i'll keep miss gobby on the side i'll i'll still keep my uh my bumble or keep her number in my phone again comes back to then how wholeheartedly are you actually going into this yeah you know, I, I i understand and this isn't a tangent now i understand where the other side of the argument will shoot away well you should keep your options open to an extent because even though you put your best foot forward it might not work out with this chick that you're serious about so maybe it is worthwhile it is a good idea to keep miss gobby on the side stop Man, these notifications through my phone, but gently along the floor. Yeah, so some some may say, well, you should keep a person on the side until you truly see if it's going to work out with this with this other person. Well, that's why I didn't say necessarily the first date. After the first date, uh, just delete everything, get off dating apps. But. Uh, by the second if not the second definitely the third you will see you will get a pretty darn good gauge where this is going and somewhere along the halfway point of this video i said even if you tell the the woman i love you within the first fortnight of dating of seeing each other that's not too soon that's not too fast if you genuinely feel that in here if that's the feelings you have for this person that's it I'm off everything else. I've deleted everyone else. These photos are still going to exist in my mind. Perhaps in my heart because my previous relationship was a good person. It just didn't work out. But I'm not going to leave remnants of that for the person who I now love and want to have something fruitful with. I'm not going to leave that in discovery for them to find. I have turned a new leaf. I've turned the page. I'll pretty much call it there for me, I think. I'll let G-Man round it out. He'll likely give his take on, on this whole phone uh, scenario, but I don't think it's too much to ask for certain things to be removed of devices, especially uh, for, an intimate, for an intimate partner to do that. And having access to their phone you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be taboo. So even like, I, like how there's locks on screens, I think you just, you should know your pin code, each other's pin code. Now, where I'm getting at with the trust is, I think it's 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 fine to know each other's pin code. What I'm saying is not fine, is to then uh, exploit that and use it daily. Oh, I know her pin code, so I'm going to pick her phone up and I'm just going to look through it every day. Every time I feel insecure, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to start going through it. Because I'm feeling insecure, I'm feeling an inkling, I want to check. I'm not saying that 
you, you got it there. You know it's there. You, you know how to access her phone if need be. And she's not hiding it. And she's not taking it every time she goes and has a shower. Goes to the bathroom. It's just there. I've had that. I've had my partner's phone just there. She's going to take a shower. Potentially got 10 minutes to do whatever the hell I want. Look through whatever I want. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because I don't have a uh, pretext. I don't have pretext to, to feel that way about her. To mistrust her. To want to do that. But it's also there if, man, I can't find my phone. I just threw it on the ground and then I walked away, stepped over it. And then half an hour later, hypothetically, I can't remember where I put my phone. Shit, we got to go out for dinner. I pick hers up. I unlock it. I call my own phone. Just a simple example. Hypothetical. Anyway. I agree with that one because uh, being someone who has done, you know, juggled women and lied to women and done all that shit in the past. Yeah, I, absolutely. If a girl got access to my phone, that would have blown the lid off everything. So absolutely, I, I think that is probably the only real good red flag that they've said. But it goes to women too. Ask a woman to give you her phone. It's like Pandora's box. There's going to be some sort of secrets in there you're going to find. You, some things you're probably not going to want to see most of the time. You go into her Facebook, you go into her Snapchat, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp messages. I would be very surprised if most women had a full clean clean record on there especially when they're seeing and talking to other men or talking like it's supposed to be dating someone and exclusively are they exclusive i don't know because lots of times there have been occasions where i know women that are in relationships and they still message me every day on facebook wanting attention and shit happens a lot i know women that are married that were doing that after they got married and i was like no nah, i can't talk to you anymore you're fucking married I'm like bug off so yeah, the whole phones, I think phones are a really, um, I think ever since the advent of the smartphone, I think for both men and women, but mostly for women too, and some guys who can, it's just become like this tool that makes all your dreams come true in terms of variety, you know, using apps and having the reach and everything you can with contacting people in a split second. I think it's really ruined the fabric of people getting to know each other genuinely. And that's why we, there's so many videos. Yes, just on that note, I feel as though that's why women and men made stronger attempts more genuine efforts in pursuing trying to establish and keep a relationship you actually had to go out to meet someone you had to put in the time which means you had to put in effort you had to have a shower do your hair do your makeup get dressed then meet someone okay have all the natural chemicals hormones Butterflies in your stomach before they meet, before they rock up. You go through that whole process. Right? You establish face value connection right off the bat, from the get-go. And all that took time and effort. So now that you're there, you're naturally going to make the effort. You're going to try. And likely, the guy will... Be, do, be in the same boat. He will be trying. He's made a degree of effort. He's rocked up. Like these women say, it's the expectation, more so than not, is that he's going to pay. And now with the advent, yes, of smartphones, of these dating apps, you, you bypass all that. You, you don't have any of that intrinsic face value. Everything is overstepped, overshot, overhurdled. And... You're pretty much cutting to the chase. Mm. Do these photos look good? Yes. Am I horny? Yes. Do you want to come over tonight? It's like this and the ones that I make getting made because I can't say it getting any better. I can't. I don't say degrading worse. Um, especially as you sort of, um, you know, guys that are angry at women and, and rightfully so. You got a lot of women who are over entitled, uh, wanting a lot not providing much back so you can understand why a lot of guys are in that boat because if people could say to me what do you think the percentages of guys and girls who who's ruining dating i'm going to say it's probably 20 percent from men maybe 10 percent, and the rest is from women all right that, that, that's my honest appraisal of that i know many guys who just be happy to have a nice girlfriend would be a fantastic guy um well it all depends on your expectations that's who's ruining so as a guy, you've got your set of expectations, your non-negotiables, your red flags. 
And if there's no red flags and your expectations are reasonable and the woman's presenting herself to not only uh, fulfill them but exceed them, well, you're all set on your end. So then it, the, the question beckons of what are her expectations. And if she's got these iffy, uh, what, what was the word, icky, uh, rather unreasonable and questionable red flags, like your relationship with your mother is somehow a red flag. So if her expectations are unfeasible and unreasonable and, 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 and can't even be logically based or explained, okay, she's just got this uh, inkling, all right, like this other video that you might have seen that I did with, with G-Man, uh, my ex is a Taurus, I've got bad experience with a Taurus, red flag, buzzed out, fuck you, see you later, I'm not interested. If that's the sort of head and presentation you're going into it with, that even the horoscope is going to throw you off and not even give this person a chance to, to not give this interaction a chance, if that's part of your red flags, uh, that's the boundaries you've set, the walls you've put up, more power to you, but you're never going to find what you want if you're unreasonable about it. You have to be willing to compromise. Mr. Perfect and Mrs. Perfect does not exist. You will have to compromise at some point. But, you know, they, they struggle. They can't find somebody because then the women want something that doesn't exist because they live off, you know, the ideals of men that are on Instagram or in movies and stuff like that. Like, it's just out of control now. All right, I'm just going to play this one out, gents. All right, G-Man will play this one out and he'll finish with his final, final thoughts, pardon me. I've explicitly expressed just about everything I wanted to say on a wide array of different topics that have come up. So my final thoughts are, speak about red flags. It's a good first conversation to have. It's not too full on or too far forward, okay? If you establish your non-negotiables and your expectations, I'm not saying go flat out with a list, but the key core elements, and she knows yours and you know hers, and you see just how they align. I'm not talking about fucking interests that you barrack for the same football club or listen to the same style of music. I'm talking core values, such as faith. If you can get that out of the way and establish whether it's going to be a good fit or not, you can save yourself from some pain down the road, potentially a long time down the road. Because sooner or later, when non-negotiables come up, and even after a significant amount of time with the other person, if it's a non-negotiable, it's going to stay a non-negotiable. And then it's going to be either you, and most likely you as a man, compromising yourself, your own integrity, or it's going to end in smoke and flames. So that's it for me. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like just so I know that you enjoyed it, that you took something from it. If you leave an elaborate comment saying what you liked, perhaps the positive uh, note that you took from the video, leave it in the comments. I get back to just about every single comment. And same with G-Man. Give him a like and a follow. Subscribe to his channel as well for solid content like this. I know I go in a lot more depth and rattle off things for significantly longer based on the information that's provided. So I got a slightly different style, but G-Man keeps it rather brief and real as well. So again, give him a follow and a like. And thank you for being here. We'll see you in another video. I'll let G-Man round it out now people live i mean the whole if you have nothing to hide argument is the same dumb argument that politicians make when they want to probe every inch of your life and i think it's absolutely hilarious that this argument comes from the same people who can't seem to shut up about the importance of boundaries we already live in a world where corporations and governments want to control your every move see your every thought and dictate everything you say and do so why the hell would you want to invite this into a relationship these women shouting out red flags are constantly using the words trust and boundaries without even understanding what those mean.
I 100% trust my mother, who even has partial access to my finances, and I gave her 10% of my business. I haven't gone full Hakimi yet, but maybe someday I will. However, I still don't give her access to my phone, nor do I want access to hers. Just let people have that last piece of personal space, since Big Daddy Elon is already firing up the Neuralink, which means that pretty soon, people will be able to plug in their brains into a shit. Now I gotta interject Neuralink. It's never gonna happen. You're never gonna establish, create whatever manufacturer device, especially for the masses, where you can uh, put a chip in someone's brain, download all the data, and then for safety reasons, encrypt it, and then for someone else to now download it to be able to read those thoughts, what, visually see them? It's never gonna happen. You can't even fathom just how much we'll just call it hard drive space there is in someone's brain okay how much data and the intricacies of nerve cells and neurons and this little fucking chip is going to make it possible for someone to read my thoughts my emotions allegedly to view them to interpret them it's never going to happen not in your lifetime if you're watching this right now in 2024, 2025, if you're watching this in 2035, it's not going to happen. No fucking way. That's it. I'm done. Aired network. And, and then I guess I'm going to end the video on this point because I'm just going to go down a whole other rabbit hole. This Neuralink thing. There will be people lining up. There will be a waiting list of people to plug their brains in the computers and turning themselves into half a cyborg. Like the general public. Fuck. What's, you can see what's, where we're going to, we're going to end up in cyberpunk. If you guys know what cyberpunk is. It's a good game, but it's never going to happen. You can just see it, the writing on the wall. Something out of Blade Runner or something like that. You know, people signing up for, for being augmented by technology. You imagine you got something like that in your brain. There's no secrets then from anybody. There's no independent thought. There's no, anyway, but the, as I said, the people that are probably going to sign up for that are the, the guys and girls in the dating uh, market who are reckoning it for everybody. All right, guys, on that note, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end if you have, and I'll see you in the next one.